The other thing we need to talk about is what's going on down at the English Channel and at our borders, because we're a sovereign nation. It turns out that in the last uh, seven days alone, another 2,240 people have come across in small boats. At 40 grand a pop in the first year, that is another 90 million quid. Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by the Director of Migration Watch, Dr Mike Jones, and also the Labour MP, a regular and friend of the show, uh, from Birmingham Perry Bar, Khalid Mamu. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us as my first guest on the show. Great to see you. So, uh, I've just mentioned there, if we look at sort of the, uh, the issue of the boats, um, and I want to ask both of you the simple question. Let's start with you first, Mike. Uh, how are we going to stop the boats? Well, ultimately, ideally, uh, you'd need a bilateral agreement with France. Uh, joint operations, joint boat patrols, uh, returns policy, but that doesn't seem to be politically possible at the moment. The EU have rejected a returns policy with the UK. So ultimately, this is going to come down to the Supreme Court decision on the Rwanda policy. And I believe that if the Supreme Court does rule in the government's favour and sufficient people uh, are removed from the country, then that will act as a sufficient deterrence. I don't believe it will solve the illegal migration crisis as a whole because you have many other people coming here through various clandestine means. But you really do think that will be a deterrent, given that it's only a, even if the Supreme Court rule in the government's favour, it'll only be a few hundred that go there. Won't, uh, won't people just, just take their chance? It, it depends on the numbers removed. I mean, for example, in Australia, when they struck a similar deal with Papua New Guinea, between 2012 and 2013, around 25,000 people arrived by small boat. Um, fast forward a year, that went down to 157. A year later, th that number was zero. Um, so, it yeah, OK, I'll come back to that because you're absolutely right. Um, Khalid, uh, morning to you. Uh, how how are La How's Labour going to stop the boats if you get into power next year, which the polls seem to suggest is likely? Well, I've said this before, and I think the easy way to do this is to work hard, to work hard with the French. And as Mike has just said, we need cooperation on the French beaches, we need more surveillance on the, front be uh, on the French be beaches, but also we need to look at safe and secure entry, where we can look at people who are eligible to come in and then block anybody who's coming in uh, for any other reasons uh, than having a right asylum to the United Kingdom. So we haven't had an uh, appropriate approach in this. And, and frankly, what Mike is saying, it hasn't uh, worked as a deterrent. It's cost us millions and hundreds of millions of pounds, the Rwanda deal. And it's not going to work. It hasn't worked. It's not going to be a deterrent. New Zealand is very different uh, to you, what you, the United you, Kingdom, uh, Kingdom you mean, is. You mean Australia, I think. European border, and we've got to be able to, to look at that. I agree with you. I don't think Rwanda will be a deterrent. But you say, I mean, Rishi's been working closely with Macron. He's sent him hundreds of millions of pounds, and it's still not worked. So in a sense... Uh, he's doing what you're suggesting, Khalid, and it's it's not working. Well, no, I, I think what Rishi has done without the experience of doing something properly, uh, we've got Sakir Starmer, who's been uh, head of the Crown Prosecution Services, who understands how to negotiate properly and to do an adequate deal. What this deal is not adequate, unless we have our own border forces there making sure that people aren't coming through, having proper surveillances. How many drones have we got flying across there? Hardly any. Why would right? so what, so Khalid, why, why would, why would Macron do a, come in from and do that? Why would Macron do a deal with Starmer when he's uh, done already a deal with, uh, with Sunak? Unless it's just a case of, well, send me another 500 million quid and maybe I'll, I'll do a bit better. Well, first of all, what I said before is if we weed out the people that should have uh, asylum, safe asylum for the threat they're under, that reduces the people that will be coming through illegally. And we're talking about illegal people coming through at the moment. And so we have a better base to work with, but we need a far better deal. And negotiation of deals is a key thing. And this is where I think Sakir Starmer uh, would be absolutely fantastic because the legal background that he's had, he knows what he wants to do. He's got a fantastic defense uh, shadow sector, John Haley. Uh, he's, he's got but, brilliant uh, shadow yes, home sector. But, but the reality Cooper. is... So we've got great people working together to do this. The reality is 
the evidence is clear. I mean, Australia, they just, they pushed back the boats. Uh, they, the, um, uh, Tony Abbott won the 2013 election on a policy of, of stop the boats by pushing them back. And it worked. And unless we push the boats back, pick them up safely and take them back to France, which I believe we're entitled to do under international law, um, Mike, this is this is never going to stop. Um, I think you've got to be sensible about this. And in theory, I'm not against a pushback policy. It works very well for the Australians. But the situation is very different in the English Channel. Uh, essentially, it's it's extremely narrow. Um, it's one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about pick up and take back, not push back. The problem is we don't have a bilateral agreement with the French. Don't need one. We've got international treaties to rely on. Uh, we have international treaties that mean that we have to save these people. Yes, if in yes and if you read the treaties, it says we, we can take them back to where they came from, which was France, the beaches of France. Uh, the, the French aren't going to like that at all. The, the thing is, pushback policies work when you have the bilateral agreements in place, which is what Australia had. Uh, again, I, I'm not against them in theory, but I, I think this is a very difficult way to go down. Because well, essentially, well, no, nothing, nothing, else, it, nothing else works. Khalid? This is the real point that I'm trying to make to you, is that unless you have a proper agreement with the French, you can't do any of this. Uh, we can say, and you can say, we can pick them up and put them back. The French don't have an agreement. And the issue we also have is the, the law isn't on the government's side. And they have to look through this properly and deal with it. Okay, and so, we're so, not a, you know, we, we are the lawmakers. We were the people who first started off uh, as a nation many hundreds of years ago as the people who lived by the law, created so, the law. So, Khalid, if, and, so, and, and, so, so Khalid you, you've just said there that we have to have an agreement with the French. So if we, if, we, if we don't get, I mean, we've already got an agreement with the French and it hasn't stopped the boats. If we don't get a different agreement, you're basically saying that this goes on forever. No, what I'm saying is also what you've got to have, Richard, is you've got to have agreed uh, safe routes for people to come in. We've already we got safe take routes. That, 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 as an international, we, as an international, as an international, uh, nation, uh, one of the best nations in the world, which abide by the rule of law. We have to get the right people who come in and all those illegal people that we can't in, then we can stop them. Kelly, I'm, so I'm delighted. To, I, you, you brought the biggest me on, problem, Richard, also. You, you brought me Sorry. on to the second point, which is we've already got safe and legal routes. It's called lawful visa-based immigration. And the, the reality is that... Um, uh, We've got we've we've had record numbers just uh, announced this uh, this week of visas that were issued in the 12 months to June 2023. That's the safe and legal way to do it. And we've had uh, visas 58 percent higher than in the year to June 2022, including um, uh, an extra uh, half a million work visas, 650,000 study visas. So we've got safe and legal routes, Khalid. Well, no, what you've got is at the moment, refugees are people who have no documents, who've been persecuted in their own lands, and they're not able to get across. They've got documents, and they're so throwing them into the, the English Channel. They will not be able to get a visa. And so therefore, we, can't, we have to support them and see what we can do. The real uh, refugees that we need to support. And that's what I'm trying to say, Richard. We need to support those people as an international nation to do that. Um, and we do. We've, we've taken, uh, we've taken f over 450,000 asylum seekers in the last um i think it's the last seven or eight years we've been one of the most generous nation um but i, I do well, want to process do... them the problem we've got richard is we haven't processed them no we have and those, those, the those have been the processed has not done its job that, that's, that's the problem is. no Kelly, that's not true that's the number that have been processed uh we've yeah. still got the 175,000 that have people have we got outstanding but, at the moment but let's move on to let's move on to lawful immigration because uh this is another uh, key part of a sovereign nation. You've got to decide how many people you want to welcome to come and study, live and work in a country. And uh, we had uh, in the year to uh, June 23, as I say, we've got um, millions more visas granted. So we've got millions more people coming to the UK. Um, Mike, uh, should there be a limit on this number or actually have we basically got a situation where the two main parties uh, are welcoming just complete open borders? Yeah, there, there should certainly be a cap on work visas and on student visas also. 
uh, essentially what you have in Westminster is, is a cartel. Uh, it's like it's like watching two bald men argue over a comb. Uh, both parties are committed to mass legal migration. I mean, the statistics are absolutely shocking. We're now issuing over 320,000 work visas. Uh, we, you know, the number of student visas is just shy of half a million. Uh, a quarter of these are dependents. Uh, the, the public is massively in favor of restricting migration, and they assume that the government is on their side, and that if we do have mass immigration, it's due to a failure of policy. Well, what we're seeing today is a deliberate policy of, of mass immigration. Uh, that's right. And presumably that's a policy that, that you support. Would you have a limit on uh, on numbers coming to live in the UK, Khalid, as part of Labour policy, or do you just welcome open borders? Uh, everyone no, welcome. of course we would have limits. Of course so we would have what, limits. What would but be the, the number? You've got with this government, What's the number? The, the, the problem you've got with this government, Richard, is that they've stopped taking figures of those students that are coming here and absconding from universities. They haven't had figures for the last three years. Why have they done that? And those are the questions you need to ask of this Conservative government. No, no, who's but, yeah, but, but in all its obligations. What number, in what number would you, what limit would you put on lawful immigration every year? The limit is quite simple, that we've got to speak to our industry, we've got to speak to people who need who need those, those people to become and to be employed. We've got to speak to our universities and ensure those people are coming in, are reported as soon as they have come from, from a course and make sure that their needs are met in terms of the income that these people bring in, in terms of universities and they go back. So we're going to have a structure internally that accounts for people when they come in and not when they're allowed to so disappear. You, so you haven't got a number at the moment, is what you're saying. Well, you've got a year to have those discussions. Well, no, no. The number, Richard, is quite simply this, is that we speak to industry, we speak to the Chambers of Commerce. And well, that's say, not a number, Khalid. That, that's a discussion. <laughs> No, it's a discussion, but the, you, or from that you will arrive at a number. Once okay. you discuss these pe issues well, with listen, people, you I, will arrive I'm, at I'm ahead of you. I've got you a can number, have you see. yearly number, which you can make clear to the public that these people are coming in, but they're going to specific jobs. So they're not coming to be on the streets. And then people are going to universities. You know which people are coming to universities. And you have a register. You don't let people go. Last three years, we've got no records of students that are coming in. And whether well, they we have, we've got all the student visas. Difficult. But, Kelly, it's not that difficult. I've got a number. My number is net zero. About 450,000 leave the UK every single year. So we should welcome uh, the highest skilled, the best qualified, 450,000 coming in, which means you've got net zero. It's not difficult. Yeah, Richard, you've got a million vacancies as well you need to fill. Yeah, and we've got five million so people on out-of-work out benefits. British Are you citizens, allow, why want to get into a job? Progress in terms of development and, 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 and the advance that we make uh, in terms of as a nation and grow ourselves, or you're going to allow the demography, the demography of the country which at the moment has an issue because we have an aging population, we don't have sufficient people working. So what we're going to do is look at the best interests of the country to make sure that people who come here actually contribute pay their taxes and do positive stuff uh, work rather than just being coming in and having no record of them. Mike, um, what do you think of my number of net zero? Would you, uh, would you support that or do you think that's, uh, that, that's unsustainable? Well, I, I think the, the first target we need is to get net migration below 100,000 and then take it from there. Right, uh, OK. So oh, you've, you've got a number on it. Uh, yes, less than 100,000. Absolutely. I, I think that's the best place to start. Uh, I mean, Khalid uh, talks about uh, vacancies and, and an aging population. The problem is we could have a population of 1 billion and there'd still be vacancies. Supply and demand are always going to be out of balance. I mean, if, if you import 500,000 people to fi fill 500,000 vacancies, you're going to create almost as many because immigrants don't just produce goods and services they consume them as well and, and they cre create jobs in turn so that this is this is around the lump what they call the lump of labor fallacy so yeah, I, I that ratio yeah Ka that Kali, ratio Kali, at the moment if, if, you, have a, if you have a if Kali, if you have open... that ratio in balance so we can act as a real economy and, and where are all these people that you're going to welcome uh, where, they, where are they all going to live Khalid? we've got a housing crisis we've got a public services crisis Everything's in crisis, and the head of the OBR admits that actually uh, immigration doesn't increase um, wealth per head. Well, I think that the real issue 
what we're discussing and we should be discussing is that what those people contribute to the economy when they come in and that is a huge factor that we need to deal with and that's what we're not dealing with at the moment we need to be open and honest to the people that we need these people in order for our economy to survive and we should be doing that openly and honestly and saying that's what we need to do all right well i think we've got five million people on out of work benefits i think we should be getting as many of those back into work uh, rather than uh, increasing the problem. Gentlemen, you've been fantastic start to my show. I really do appreciate it. It's a big, controversial, sensitive subject. But Dr Mike Jones, the Director of Migration Watch, and the Labour MP for Perry Bar, one Khalid Mahmood, a good friend of the show, have debated that in a rational, sensible and respectful way, and I'm very grateful.